The Overwatch Contenders Gauntlet begins tomorrow, and or in just a few hours depending on where in the world you live, and although a little delayed, it's time for me to bring you all my team previews ahead of the event. Obviously I'll be focusing in on each of the 10 teams who've been invited, but I'll be starting with the single representatives from Europe, the Pacific and China, before going on to look at the four sides invited from North America and the three from Korea. Within this video I want to briefly talk about their journeys to the Gauntlet, before giving my opinions on how I think they're going to perform, pointing out the key players who I think you should be looking out for, and I'll end with my bracket prediction, which I've seen a few of you asking for, but knowing my record I'm sure it's going to pan out really well. Just before I get stuck into it though, I do want to clear up one issue that lots of people have been asking me about in regards to the number of invites each region has received for the gauntlet. In order to add further weight to the Atlantic and Pacific showdowns earlier this year, the worst performers would be at risk of losing their regional invites, whilst the best performing teams would earn their regions more. This is why when they finished, the South American and Australian contenders regions lost their invites due to their teams finishing last, whilst the North American and Korean regions found themselves having more invites than the remaining regions. Hopefully that all makes sense. It feels appropriate that I start with my most familiar and local contenders region of Europe, who is being represented by HSL Esports. Heading into the past contenders season, they were heavily overlooked with most of the attention being focused on the big three and Clock with Vendetta, but it did not take long for the squad to show off its quality. They were the first team to defeat Clock with Vendetta in the regular season with a 3-2 victory, and as the season progressed they firmly established themselves as one of the strongest hands I made pulled pork teams in Europe, with the region radically veering away from GOATs. Despite this, they were still seen as underdogs heading into the playoffs, but used this as inspiration to not only reverse sweep clock with Vendetta in the semis, but also dominate Team Gigante in the final to be crowned champions. A key reason for the success has been the teamwork and coordination, which is consistently strong, and while Zapri and Fisher can absolutely pop off of a DPS position, I'd also point your attention towards the tank line of Henningsen and Chow, whose ability and ultimate usage was very underappreciated, and I'm excited to see the impact they can have on Arissa and Sigma. Of course this is a team I'm wanting to do well, and I do genuinely believe they have a great chance of making it through their group. However, on paper, I don't think they have the strongest squad, and I do see them struggling should they make the finals bracket. For the next team I'll be discussing, Talon Esports, rather than an underdog rise to power from out of nowhere, their journey to the gauntlet has been on the back of complete regional dominance. It convincingly won the first Pacific Contender season this year, and backed this up with an incredibly impressive 4th place finish at the Pacific Showdown, with a massive win over LGE Huya that kept the regional invites at the gauntlet. Building upon strength after strength, this is a mixed roster that has been simply unchallenged in the Pacific, with a most recent regular season record of 27-1 which really should have been perfect, and a very easy playoff run that has seen them make it to the gauntlet. If I have to point to any individual players to watch out for though, it has to be their DPS duo from Thailand, Oputo and Patifang. They're nutters at this position, having shown their ability in the past at World Cups, and I reckon they're set to perform well once again. Overall though, I think this is a team riding a huge amount of momentum heading into the gauntlet, and like at the Pacific Showdown, I genuinely believe they could be one of the surprises of the tournament with a strong progression into the finals bracket, even if late round success is unlikely. Rounding out the single region representatives, we have China's LG Huya, who I personally have to admit I haven't seen too much play from. That said, I made an effort to catch up with some of the highlights from their previous playoff run, where they showed some promising things, particularly from their DPS player Kami, who likely will be one of the most important pieces of the gauntlet, alongside their support Molly. This team knows success having won back-to-back -back Chinese contenders titles, and they are backed by the Chengdu Hunters of their academy roster. That said, last time they were on the international stage, they were embarrassed 3-0 by Talon Esports at the Pacific Showdown, and that's part of the reason why I'm not convinced they're going to cause too many surprises this time round, but I will be interested to see how much they've improved, and if they can finally pick up that international stage win. With the single representatives out of the way though, let's now move on to North America, who are sending the largest number of teams for four, although let me begin with the Gladiators Legion. On paper I've always liked their squad, with players like Water at DPS, Panker at Tank and Rolf at Flex Support, not forgetting Maid as coach, but they've just seemed to never fulfil their potential. Whilst they did manage to go on a fantastic playoff run that saw them qualify for the gauntlet, let's not forget this team narrowly avoided contenders relegation on a tie break with a 2-5 record. On paper I think they're North America's weakest team here, but it will be interesting to see if they can make it out of groups, which I think for them needs to be their goal. XL2 Academy meanwhile have been a lot more consistent and were undoubtedly the second best team in the NA West contenders region behind Team Envy. Shout out to my Team UK lad KSP who's been a real asset to this team at the DPS position beside Buds and Speedily, and certainly this is the role from which this team relies upon with strong performances to succeed. They are another who is certainly capable of getting out of groups, but I think they certainly have a tougher test and will need to bring together a complete team package to succeed. The team that finished ahead of them though is Team Envy, who were pretty dominant at winning the NA West after a 7 0 regular season, with arguably their most competitive series coming in the final where they beat XL2 4 2. I think that their subsequent 4 1 loss to the Atlanta Academy for seeding highlights that they certainly aren't as strong and likely won't be able to challenge the strongest Korean teams at the gauntlet, especially having lost their tank pairing midway through last contender season. 
However, they've still replaced this position well with Numlox and Hafikul, who I both like, but more attention will be placed on the DPS pairing of Jara and Sharp, who will definitely need to perform big time if his team wants to make it far, with success over every non-Korean team a feasible ambition due to their strong overall squad. That said, the number one seed from North America, and clearly their best chance of success, comes in the form of Atlanta Academy, who have a bye through the group stage. Since Fusion University left the North American contender scene, this roster hasn't looked back and has simply dominated everyone else around them. They have an incredibly strong roster across every role, with a brilliant support duo of Funny Astro and Kodak, whilst the Overwatch League playoff star Gator is allowed to return to his academy side, alongside Hawk with a Sigma quality and experience bound to be crucial, whilst I personally am extremely excited to see how their young DPS superstar Sugar Free performs on the international stage. Personally, I only see Korean rosters being a realistic challenge to them, and of course whilst they'll definitely be competing to try and win it all, I think their biggest aim will be to try and finish inside the top 3 after defeating at least one of these Korean sides to validate their quality and live up to the hype unlike Fusion University. This just leaves me with the three Korean teams themselves to briefly discuss, and let's start with Gen.G. They enjoyed a successful past regular season finishing 6-1, but came up short against Element Mystic before confirming their qualification to the gauntlet with a win over O2 Blast. This is certainly quite a strong roster on paper, which across the roles mixes high level experience with the likes of Wakid and Huyu or DPS and Tank, with young upcoming talent and Bliss at support. I'm not too confident though that they'll be able to overcome Element Mystic or Runaway due to the meta, but if they can avoid defeat to everyone else outside of their region, then I think they can see this tournament as being successful, and I'd also keep a keen eye on Oberon and Glister to make names for themselves as well. However, speaking of which, Element Mystic are up next, and I've completely bought into this squad, probably at my peril ahead of the gauntlet. Their regular season was admittedly scrappy, but they were able to turn things around in the playoffs where they made it to the final and with the meta where it currently is, I have very high hopes for this team. Of course there's the obvious player to point out is Sparkle, who is destined to enter the Overwatch League next season as one of the premier tier 2 DPS talents, as arguably the best Doomfist player in the world, which makes me excited to see what he can do with this meta. That doesn't mean you shouldn't discount the rest of his squad who are all very talented and could excel if too much attention and too many resources are focused by their opposition into just dealing with Sparkle. But the favourite for many is the top two from Korea, in Runaway, who despite only having an average regular season, really turned up in the playoffs and dominated, leading to them being crowned champions. Many players on this roster are being highly tipped for promotions to the Overwatch League, with the standouts across positions being in my eyes Yaki at DPS, Mag at Tank and Lee Jai Dong at support. This roster and organisation certainly lives within a winning culture, and when it gets down to crunch time they usually turn up with a bang, and I'd expect nothing less of them here, as I expect them to get a finals appearance, which will be a must, as anything less would have to be a major disappointment for them, even if it is unlikely. Now that I've gone through all 10 teams though, let's look back at the bracket and see what my very early predictions are for it. Starting with Group A, you can see that I've gone for Element Mystic taking down Talon unsurprisingly opening match, before I reckon HCL takes a win over XL2 Academy. Now I know this might be a very debatable pick, with Europe looking poor at the Atlantic Showdown and XL2 actually looking quite good, but I have a gut feeling HSL will just edge it out. Of course they'll go on to lose to Element Mystic who will top Group A as one of the strongest teams of the gauntlet in my opinion, but in the elimination match I have XL2 being defeated by Talon Esports. I really really like the look of this team, and in particular it's DPS duo who I discussed earlier, and I just think like they did at the Pacific Showdown, they'll find a way to come up clutch when they need to, with them also going on to beat HSL for second place in the match afterwards. As for Group B, I think the equation is a lot simpler, with a clear difference in quality between the teams at the top and the teams at the bottom of the group, unlike the more competitive middle ground of Group A. At least in my opinion, Team Envy and Gen G should really have little difficulty in winning their opening matchups, and whilst I like Envy, I don't think they're good enough to beat the Korean competition just yet, so I have them coming second in the group behind Gen G as winners. This just leaves the elimination match between Gladiators Legion and LG Huya, and I just can't shake LGE's choke on the international stage last time out, which is why I have them falling as Gladiators Legion go on to take third. With XL2 Academy and LG who you are eliminated, I now have my finals bracket shaped up. Starting on the upper side, I'm going to predict that in the opening round, Runaway get the better of Gen G, whilst Element Mystic take the W over Atlanta Academy, before Element Mystic go on to defeat Runaway and book place into the final. On the loser side, in the meantime, I think the Gauntlet's adventures for HCL Esports and the Gladiators Legion come to a close against Team Envy and Talon Esports, before his pair is then defeated themselves by Gen G and Atlanta Academy in the following round. I still do really like Atlanta Academy, but after seeing what happened to Fusion Uni, I'm still not convinced they'll be able to go all the way. That said, I think they'll be able to pick up at least one win over the Koreans as they defeat Gen G before losing to Runaway. This would create a final between Runaway and Element Mystic, who on paper I think are the strongest teams at the gauntlet this year. Still, despite their success in the past season of Korean contenders, I just have this feeling that Runaway are going to come out short, with Element Mystic behind Sparkle going on to win it all. But this is just a bit of fun, unfounded prediction and I'd love to hear who you all think is going to win the gauntlet down in the comments below. 
But on that note, we reach the end of my Contenders Gauntlet preview and prediction, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Over the next week, I'm planning to post a couple of videos recapping and reviewing what's been happening at the Gauntlet. So if you enjoyed and don't want to miss out, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter for this continuing competitive Overwatch coverage and content. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.